Okay. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is um, go through the yoga snippets. And if you've already had a chance to go through the yoga snippets, then this would be a great chance to refine that knowledge and begin to commit some of it to memory so you're prepared to teach. Uh, if you go to the table of contents, you see yoga snippets, you see the yoga on the handbook, and you see the workbook. And the workbook just basically encompasses but, you know, what's on the syllabus and what you can expect to learn in this training, or at least a, a broad stroke view of it. Uh, so tonight we're going to focus on those snippets. And so these names of these snippets aren't necessarily something that anybody knows in the world per se, uh, rather than I thought they were clever names to name my snippets. And that's what those are. So <laughs> I think that's, that came up at one point. So that's my disclaimer. Uh, so essentially a snippet, uh, I ask that on the first 100 hours of your training that you attempt to try and just assemble the snippets that I've created. And then in the back half of the training or on, on certain lessons that we make an invitation to switch it up that those will be the lessons that you change the snippets or maybe better yet, you just infuse one of the asanas that are in the asana handbook into the yoga snippets. Uh, the reason for this is it can really help build confidence in teaching when your students know what it is you want them to do. And so that's just the art of teaching. Uh, also, they're as good as any, I think. Uh, there's other programming in the world. I think there's 80,000 documented yoga asana. And yeah, so all those, um, these are the ones I chose to teach an example of teaching yoga. Um, so when we do labs like this, where we're creating classes and stuff, I do ask that we do not Google postures or add postures that are not either in the manual or in yoga anatomy, largely just for the sake of time. You know, for, we can maximize our training time. So keeping that in mind, if this is the 90th time you've heard it, then I think everybody should be on the same page as far as that goes. Uh, okay. So yoga snippets. So the first one is warrior dance. So if you want to come into a warrior one, everyone can come into a warrior one and just step that right foot forward. Step that right foot forward. And some of the cues that we are going to share, our hips are forward, square under the shoulders. Can bring that back foot to a 45 degree angle or any other posture that feels right for you. By all means, this would be a great time to change up how, how wide of a stance you've taken or how long of a stance you've taken and what's feeling right for you. If you have any discomfort or pinching in the shoulders or neck even, maybe bring hands to prayer. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about doing a warrior one. Inviting that knee over the ankle is about what I'm looking for though. And by all means, feel free to take a stance, smaller stance as, as you like. So from here, let's open up into a warrior two. So let's open up those arms and hips and sink into that knee a little bit more deeply. And we could find that we switch up the length of this posture too. Maybe we inch and scooch that back foot forward. Maybe we send it back a little further. But what we do want to do is divide that weight evenly between the front and the back. Uh, the hands can come out and the front palm can face down or up, whatever's right for you. And modification is hands can come to heart center. So it's always a nice, easy go-to, knowing that you can take a smaller stance at any time. So let's bring this into a reverse warrior as we send the front arm back and reach towards our back leg. And just being mindful not to bear any weight on the knee there. And lengthening through the side body, fingertips reach towards the sky. Take a nice deep breath. Let's come into a star pose, nice and big. And we're just gonna change directions. Now at any time you could come into a mountain if you like, if you wanna give legs a little bit of break, but we will be getting a break in just a moment. I promise you it's coming. So let's head over to the other side of our mat now and take that warrior one on the left-hand side of the body. Allow that back foot to come into a 45 degree angle. Now some say that the front heel can come into alignment with the instep of the back foot. And that can happen, but depending on the width of your bony structure, and that may or may not be right for you. So feel free to switch it up by all means. Reaching the fingertips long to the sky, having softness through the shoulders, remembering you can always take a smaller stance or invite the hands to prayer by all means, heart center, whatever feels good to you. 
From here, let's take a nice deep breath and open it up into warrior two, other side. Again, you may wanna shift your stance from where you landed from your warrior one into this warrior two, hanging out here. Imagine as though that knee comes over the ankle. And if you go a little further, not quite as far as that, that's completely fine. This is your class, pay no mind to it. What I'm looking for is a nice openness through the chest and a softness through the neck. Maybe a gaze coming forward to the front hand if that feels good. Let's flip that front hand up to face the sky and send it back into reverse warrior, other side. This is also known as peaceful warrior, depending on who your teacher is that day. Taking a nice deep breath, inhale and exhale. Let's all return to star. Nice and big and step back into our mountain. Taking a break at the top of your mat. All right, so everybody can take a sit. And let's just jot down some notes on what came up for you in that sequence. So we'll take about five minutes to do that. What came up for you in that sequence? Uh, if you're not sure what came up for you, then maybe you want to write out in sentence form a script of how you might guide a practitioner through the sequence, and that would work too. And I'll just set a timer on my phone for five minutes here so that I do not forget about how long it has been since I set you guys on this test. And then we will talk about what we came up with.
about a minute to go. So hopefully that is a helpful practice and we'll move through these um, and we will add in some postures on the back half during lab for Creative Class on four. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the next one. So flip over to Warrior Dance. And now we're coming into the star hinge plies. I definitely recommend handing out blocks to everyone. So if you don't have blocks, um, try it. <clears throat> Maybe don't go quite as far as you would otherwise. Uh, and order not try to make a little bit. So So usually what I do is instruct folks to have the blocks wherever it is I intend to have them being used soon. So whether that be take your blocks and put them at the top of the mat or on the side of the mat. Um, usually at the top of the mat is my go-to where I have people get their blocks and drop off their blocks. And that way we're not like running out of space. So depending on what works for you. So we're going to start off in that star. So we're going to do star hinge plies. So right where we left off before coming to star, palms are nice and thick, fingertips are spread and wide. Those fingertips reach. Have a nice active core here. At any time, you can bend the knees if that works better for you. Some folks like to have toes forward, others like to have toes out. You decide what's right for your body. So from here, let's sink into a goddess as so our tailbone drops towards the earth and the arms take a bowl post. Nice and strong, fingertips open and wide. Feel the stretch through the palm of the hand. And imagine as though you're pressing forward and back at the same time, but your arms cannot move. Holding on to this nice and soft, knowing at any time you can return to star if that's right for you, or maybe even a mountain if that's where you want to be. But from here, what if we reach towards the floor? And if you have some blocks nearby, you can use your blocks. And as those legs begin to straighten, the hips rise towards the sky. Now, once again, the toes can be out, the toes can be forward. This is a matter of comfort for the individual student. So take what's right for you. You may wanna drape your forearms on the block. You may wanna to reach towards the floor finding what's right for you, exploring this for a moment and knowing at any time you could come up a bit so that that head is no longer below heart level, coming out of that inversion if you'd like. Feel free to move your way around an inch, scooch the hips and fingertips until this is just the right posture for you. Some folks like to take a handstand or a headstand here. I don't know that I'll be cueing that today, but it's available to you for those that want. Because we play around in this place and just discover the lengthening that takes place behind the back of the legs there. Nice and long, just like we see in that downward facing dog when we choose to straighten the knees rather than bend them in downward facing dog. We also see it in a forward fold when we're seated or standing when the legs are straight, finding that lengthening from the sole of the foot up the back, the heel, thighs. If you're feeling frisky, you could plant your right hand to the ground and invite your left hand up to the sky and take a soft twist. Find an opening through the chest. You might find that top hand feels better at your hip. 
explore what feels right to you. And by all means, feel free to return back, use blocks, whatever's right. Twists are so good for massaging the innards. Taking a nice, soft, easy breath. If you've taken the twist, now would be the time to switch over to the other side. Open and lengthen, nice, yummy twist. Get our twists in. We don't get as many twists as we would like in the day to day. Get them in yoga here. Let's drop both hands down the mat or blocks or shins or thighs, wherever you're at and slowly bend the knees just a bit. Just hang out here and ragdoll some. And when you feel ready, slowly roll up one vertebra at a time and find that goddess pose once again with those nice goalpost arms. Focus on inviting the navel to the spine, but find a softness through the back and a strength and an opening through the chest. Inhaling and exhaling. Let's reach those fingertips tall, coming back into that star just as we did. Fingertips are nice and big and give yourself a nice scan. Good job, excellent, excellent. So we'll take five minutes to jot down what came up for you. Uh, and if you can't think of what came up for you, then you can take the time to write in a script in a sentence form, how you would go about getting a student into these postures. And if you have some extra time, then maybe add in some modifications that you feel are right for you. And I'll set our timer at five and we'll start again. Five minutes to go.
about a minute and a half to go. About half a minute left. Okay, let's do it again, shall we? Let's flip the page to our next lesson. Warrior flights. So this sequence can really become a class in the making. And I think it's a nice one as we get to know it and we get comfortable with these sequencing. It can go in a number of different directions, but what it is very effective in doing is moving your class around into a different direction. So if you wanna move your class from the front of the room to the back of the room, the, these three snippets are a really nice way to do it. Um, and that star hinge place is really the one to do it and the uh, warrior, one opening to two stepping to center other side also does it. So that can be fun. Um, cautionary tale, if you do not want to turn your class around, this sequence can easily do that. So keep in mind on what foot you're having them step where and having everyone face the same direction. Um, if for some reason they're not facing the same direction or there's one student facing a different direction than everybody else, we want to give them a moment to correct that. Uh, because otherwise it could be very confusing for the student. And, you know, quite honestly, I would, I would feel all eyes on me if I'm the only one going the opposite direction. So that can happen. It's perfectly acceptable. So let's pick this up from Warrior 2. If you remember before in our Warrior 2, we moved into Star Hinge Plies. And we came from Warrior 2 and we reached to the star. And here's something we could have done instead. Uh, so in our warrior two, coming back to that, feeling the hips open up to the side of body. Let's see if we can even the weight up between the front and the back there. And if you'd like to narrow the stance or deepen the stance, whatever is right for you. And as we invite our fingertips towards the sky, find that warrior one as your hips come forward. Reaching those fingertips up and shoulders are over the hips facing forward. Let's take a nice active core here and stabilize the spine as we do. And as we straighten that front leg, let's send the arms back as we invite the belly to the thigh as we move towards pyramid pose, reaching your fingertips away. And your head can go as high or as low as feels good to you. You can even adjust your stance so you don't need to stay where you landed in this particular posture. What I want is that core to remain nice and active in order to protect the low back. Remember, you can always narrow the stance or deepen the stance, playing around with this. Taking a nice deep breath. If you were to invite the hands to heart center and bend that front knee, you would find yourself in a humble warrior if you hinged at the hips as well. So that's the difference between the humble warrior 
in the pyramid. And let's come back up to that warrior two pose that we were in just a moment ago. And send it on to the other side. So in order to be a little forgiving to our students, how about we take an open leg forward fold and invite the hands towards the earth. If you have those blocks nearby, feel free to reach them. You can also reach towards the elbows, towards the shin or thigh, whatever you need, whatever feels good. Just hanging out here for a time. As we tuck the navel into the spine, let's slowly ragdoll up, finding that star pose, reaching those fingertips far and wide, and turn that warrior two to the other side of the room now. Once again, we can see that back foot at 45 degree angle for some and different than others, and that is totally fine. What I care about that core is nice and engaged, reaching that front fingertips forward, gaze your dristies forward, Inhaling and exhaling, both fingertips rise to the sky. Find a warrior one, hips come forward under the shoulders, maybe adjusting your stance to do so. Taking a moment, finding that nice deep breath work there. As we straighten that front leg and hinge at the hips, send the arms back into a pyramid pose, fingertips reaches. Trying to create some space between the fingertips and the crown of the head. Core is nice and strong. Knowing that you can take a micro bend or a big bend, generous bend in this posture, whatever's right for you. And if you were to bring hands to heart center and bend that front knee, you'd find yourself in a humble warrior with the belly along the thighs. Could be a nice go-to, a nice sister pose to pyramid pose. And let's invite those hands down. Find that open leg forward fold once again. Beautiful. There's a softness in the knee, a little, little micro bend there. Toes can be wherever toes want to be. Maybe they're forward, maybe they out. Maybe hands reach towards the earth, maybe the shin, perhaps the thighs. You may even like to take a bind in this position for those that like to do so in their practice. Let's just take a nice moment to breathe in the day and exhale the remnants of it and tuck in the navel to the spine and slowly begin to ragdoll up, returning to that star pose from which we came. And step the feet together at the top of the mat, mountain pose. Beautiful. So we'll take five minutes to unpack that and then we'll continue on.
Okay, wrapping up here. All right, we got a few more of these to do before we start our lab. Hopefully you are enjoying the integration of other postures that we don't always see in YTT as the sister poses. So the big takeaway on this is to start to develop your library of knowledge of sister poses. Like what could a practitioner do if not what you had in mind? So you have in mind pyramid, I offered humble warrior as a sister pose. It's not a great big movement away from where everybody is. It's a generous knight knee in the bed or um, bend in the knee and hands for heart center, but otherwise it's a very similar posture. You could choose to call out humble warrior um, if you wanted to offer that up as a sister pose. Uh, it would be entirely up to you whether or not you want to do that. That's right for you. Um, okay, so let's move on over to the next one so now we're coming to the float round so we're going to see we're going to see that open leg forward fold again so we'll do it from an extended side angle we'll sweep down into sunflower and then we'll come into the other side there is really nothing called side angle reach outside of me trying to describe the movement to you as a sister pose that creates this circular movement. So this one is meant to have a, a bit of a vinyasa flow to it. It's really nice for vinyasa flow. Uh, notice in her sunflower, if you do have them doing as vinyasa flow, we don't wanna have them zooming through this in an inversion. So the head is more level with the heart than below it. So not quite an inversion. So let's start off in star pose, our favorite go-to pose and take a generous bend in the right knee. Huh? And let's invite that forearm, that front thigh. And being mindful here that what we're trying to do is keep the chest nice and open and not dump our body weight on the thigh. So you might wanna inch and scoot your toes this way and that, whatever way feels right for you, feeling that Upper arm there, reach towards the sky, knowing you can drop it down if that feels better. Feel that energy from that back foot come all the way up the side body through the hips, reaching out along the arms, all the way out through the fingertips, maybe letting go of anything that you want to prepare to let yourself go of that day. So let's sweep the fingertips down towards the earth into a sunflower and gently work into an open leg forward fold. Taking a nice, soft, deep breath. Let's continue on that sweep through to the other side, coming to extended side angle through the other side. You might find both arms reaching overhead feels better. You might find your forearm on your thigh is best for you. As we move into this extended side angle, I really like the use of the block here. So I'll come around, make sure everybody has their blocks right where they need to be. And you can decide what's right for you if the block comes to the instep of the foot or through the outer edge of the foot. So here's the thing with this particular posture. It's not so much that we're reaching, reaching, reaching towards the ground like we would for triangle pose, but rather we're opening up the chest just as we would in triangle pose. And so using that block can be a really nice way to bring the floor to you and keeping the emphasis on the openness through the chest. So for those of you that wanted to take a triangle by straightening the front leg, by all means you could, if that's what you're playing around with today. And for those of you exploring your practice, this would be a great time to pop into a half moon. So taking a moment to explore this, let's come in and out of this at your own pace, floating back down into open leg forward fold, reaching the fingertips to the ground, sweeping those fingertips through to the other side, extended side angle, other side. And really just taking your own pace. You can continue your pace with me 
or you can go more slowly or more quickly, whatever you need from your practice today. That's what I want you to do. Finding a nice open. And floating the hands back down into an open leg forward fold, finding a stretch and lengthening through the back of the legs. Maybe you shift your hips this way and that. Perhaps the toes come closer or further apart. You might decide they feel good facing forward. What I care about is you're hugging that navel to the spine, protecting that low back, knowing at any time you can bring the head above the heart level. If it's uncomfortable for you to hang out in the inversion too long, particularly folks with blood pressure things, glaucoma, you wouldn't want to stay in an inversion too long. Slowly snug your navel into the spine and find yourself ragdolling up until you move into a star pose, reaching your fingertips wide, nice and big. Taking a breath here and then return to the top of your mat in your mountain pose. And we'll do five minutes for you guys to jot down your experience and explore that. about two minutes left.
about a moment more. Okay, let's move on over to the next one, our last one for tonight before we take our break. Switch foot scissor. So I'll let you take a moment to take a look at this. Before we begin, this posture is prone, it's face up. And what I find is um, commonly yoga teachers don't have as much um, postures that the ready for the floor work part of class. And so it's always nice to weave those in before we maybe take Shavasana, we could get some of that core work done. So the one, the one thing about the switch foot scissors is really that the practitioner keeps a softness in the neck. So if you were teaching a class that was like a restorative cl uh, class or maybe a hatha or a yin where we're gonna be in this posture for a little while, you might even invite them to roll the top of the mat um, into an egg roll about mm, maybe six to eight inches from the top. So it creates a little pillow for their head to rest on or even go under the neck, what feels good for them. Uh, in, on the assumption that we don't have blankets or anything like that for them to use. Uh, I have seen some people that have um, vertigo use a block for this so that the head is above the heart. So those are just kind of some go-to, some sprinkles that I'll share with you guys along the way. So if you haven't already, go ahead and take your mat face up, that's supine, face down is prone. So this one's supine. And we are gonna bring the arms alongside the body. Once there, let's float those heels up to the sky and flex the feet nice and strong. You can have a little micro bend in your knee if you like, but what I am looking for is a nice strong core in the small of the back as close to the mat as we can get them. Slowly, we could wrap the thighs from ankles all the way up to inner thighs, nice and strong. Imagine you had a little squishy ball in between the thighs. That's what we're looking for when we wrap the thighs. And anytime you can bend the knees, that's what feels right for you. So let's take one heel and invite it to the top of the opposite foot, heel toe, and switch from one side to the next heel toe. Going at your own pace, you could hold one side for a time, or you can work quickly if that feels better for you. And as you switch through these, keeping that core nice and active in order to protect the low back. And all I really care about is that you keep that softness in between the neck. So one thing you could do is put your hands underneath your head if that feels best. So know that this is your class and these postures are there to serve you. And if you're feeling frisky, you could travel those feet down and back up again, a 45 degree angle, but by means, no pressure. We could also invite the knees to chest and just hang out and rest in this posture too. So we'll hang out in this place, just a little bit longer than we want to, just on the outskirts of this is pleasant, but before we see any kind of pain, keeping an eye on that one. All right, if you haven't already, bring your knees to chest, or if you want to take a happy baby, if that's what makes you feel good today. Those of you looking to explore your practice, feel free to come into a shoulder stand or a plow, if that's what you would like to do. And we'll take five minutes to continue on with jotting down what came up for you. If you can't remember what came up for you, then maybe write a script 
on what you would say to your student to do these things, uh, or maybe even start to consider what did you feel? Five minutes and then we'll take our break and move into lab. A couple of minutes left.
Okay, so that's a wrap for this lecture. And we'll head on over to lab for your call to action. So let's just wrap up this recording here.